moving quickly and mastering the um, internal systems we have and you know delivering pitches really effectively and getting these demos booked that when they go into an outbound role where they're paired strategically with one of our account execs, they're going to have a really, really good sense and a really good, quite frankly, worth ethic, work ethic, excuse me, so they can kind of take that momentum and translate it into doing a true ABM approach um, in that next role. Hey guys, this is Morgan J. Ingram here with another episode of the SDR Chronicles. Super excited to have two guests on today, uh, and they're from Discover.org, Patrick, and we also got Jake on here um, talking about sales development, how they're doing plays, how they're seeing success. So this is really a, another good topic that we're going to talk about, how they do their unique plays for their playbooks and how they do their outreach. So without any further ado, I'm going to let them introduce them, themselves um, until we can get to the topic of the day. Yeah, thanks, Morgan. I'm Patrick Purvis. I'm the Vice President of Sales at Discover Org. And I think we're excited to be here because we spent the last year at Discover Org scaling our SDR team from seven reps a year ago to about 25 today. Um, so we spent really the last year thinking about our SDR team and all the different things that we needed to do to make sure it's a well-oiled machine. And so we're excited to share with you uh, both the, the things that went well and a couple of the things that, that didn't go so well. Agreed. And uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jake Shafford. I manage the sales development team here. And to Patrick's point, it's definitely been an exciting ride uh, scaling it up, not without its pitfalls, uh, but certainly some successes along the way, too. So happy to be here to discuss those. Awesome. And let's let's dive into it. You know, what made you guys decide to even get plays and make a playbook? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it, Jake can tell you that when he started in, what was it, Jake, January of 2015, he came into, he was the third SDR and, and into a team that didn't really have any sort of process or playbooks created. It was sort of like hire Jake and, and throw him in there and say, get after it. And he did. He set a sort of new standard for what was possible in that role at Discover War started getting 30 completed demos a month. We used to think like 15, maybe 20 was a good month. Um, so Jake really figured it out on his own, but he brought in a lot of expertise and ideas around how we could see improvement. And so we started putting in some of those and then we realized this thing isn't scalable unless we put in really dialed in process, unless we have a playbook. Um, and we knew that, that last year we had to scale the SDR team to reach our revenue goals. Uh, we did that and it was successful, but, but the, the, linchpin to all of that was recognizing that, man, we can't just sort of be Captain Winging anymore. We got to put real process in place around this to, to make sure that they're all successful. Yeah, and I think as an extension of that, uh, when I walked in the door, a lot of the success that Discover Org had had thus far, or at that point, was really built in the back of email marketing, um, which had worked well for us. Though to get to the revenue goals that Patrick mentioned and to scale it up appropriately, there had to be some sort of formulaic and systematic approach to things. And that's really um, kind of where Patrick passed me the ball and I started to figure things out, some of which uh, fell flat on my face, quite frankly. Others uh, did quite well. And then as we scaled it up, I think we have a pretty good plug and play system now. Awesome. And, and that's good that you guys kind of noticed that you had to make plays in order to kind of elevate the playing field and elevate your results. So how did you get your reps actually bought into these plays, right? It's, it's different. It's, it's a completely different mindset as well. So like, what were you guys doing to help that adjustment? Jake, you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that by and large, everyone kind of recognized the need to do something. And for the newer reps coming on board, um, there was this feeling I would say for myself and from Patrick and from Henry, our CEO and the others, that we were all part of something really big, and I think we still have that feeling. So there was never much pushback as far as getting bought in. In fact, I would say it's the opposite. It's we collectively as a team and as a company saw the opportunity and saw how we could tweak things and put them into effect pretty immediately. And when you could see the, the uptick both in the completions each month and ultimately you know the paycheck, there's a rewarding feeling overall. And you know there's definitely times uh, 
we're all kind of congratulating one another as we figure out one challenge, but then of course the next is looming around the corner. Um, so, I mean, I, I think as far as getting everything into motion, it was pretty fluid. Um, and beyond that, I mean, I think just kind of the space that we're in, being the sales technology, it's really exciting for us to see kind of how the game is changing and to be at the forefront of that, both in terms of what we're doing as far as uh, the product itself, but also what we're doing internally from a systems and workflow perspective too. And, and from this perspective, was this something that you – got from other leaders? Was this something that you, you know, you were just in the basement, like, and you cooked up all these plans? Like, kind of what was the thought process between all these strategies that we're about to go into? I think, I would say, right uh, back. yeah, sorry. I, I would say, I think that the fortunate thing about working at Discover Org is that we sell to sales and marketing leaders and sales development leaders in particular are sort of our power users. Um, so we spend all day, every day, talking to the best and the brightest that are out there. And, and I really grew up at Discover Org, but if it's felt like working here has been a crash course in what is effective sales technique. Um, so most of what we've done, we, we look to those who have paved the way before us. Um, you know, Kyle Porter at Sales Loft, I used to read his blog back in 2012, 13. Uh, the guy had a ton of great insight. Michael Padone is a, is a great, a uh, thought leader around sales development, Trish Bertuzzi and Jill Conrath, and you know, sort of all these people laid out a path for us. Um, but also, I will say, I think we've done some things that that are unique and and interesting. We've sort of taken their their basic concepts and then try to iterate and automate them as much as possible. And so, um, it, it's nice to be able to collect all of these ideas from all these other great leaders and then try to mash them together and and take them even a step further to elevate the 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 pr process and, and the team as much as we can awesome and, and you talked about those unique plays and those unique strategies so let's let's go into that and so one of those um that you guys mentioned to me before we kind of hopped on this video is the past user discover org for discover org so kind of go into that context of that play and kind of tell the audience of what what does that mean what am i talking about sure so i think there's a few things going on there the, the first of which is in fact a past user one. And what we've done is we had spun up Discover Org for Discover Org essentially. So part of what we're doing is providing these org charts and phone numbers and email addresses. A big piece of that, however, is triggers, whether that's the projects and initiatives or leadership moves. So for us, when we see that a user, um, either the end user or decision maker has gone to another company, we have a research team keeping track of that and then that gets fed to the SDR team. And what we had found was that they convert, the um, lead to demo converts at 3x the rate for a past user, and it's 2x to uh, closed opportunity. So to, what, to bear in mind is that, you know, these are end users coming from large companies, you know, the Googles and BMCs of the Dells in the world, and they're going to small shops where there may be one of 10 reps. And when they walk in the door, it's wow, we need something and we need Discover Org today so we can really be effective in hitting the ground running. And it's kind of building those champions and having them go from company to company and throughout the space that's really uh, been successful from a past user perspective. And As, then, yeah, go ahead. I, I'd, I'd just add to that a little bit just to take a step back and explain what we mean by Discover Org for Discover Org. So we spun up a, a research team that goes and maps out the accounts that our SDRs want to sell to. Now that's exactly what we do to build our product that we sell. Our Discover Orange product is built by researchers, profiling IT departments or finance departments. And then we built an, a team to go profile the sales departments because that's who we sell to. And we, we profiled out the, the companies that we want to sell to. Um, now in doing so, it, it's, it's created sort of a, a, a great, double benefit for us. One, it feeds our SDRs the data that they need so that they're not spending all day researching. And then two, it allows us to turn this into a product so we can bring on board other companies who sell into sales uh, departments to, to leverage this data. I think it's, it's uh, one, it, it, it was a massive investment for us to make and sort of a big gamble. We spend a million dollars a year um, on this team and building out this data set, but it's one that, that paid off in spades. So I think what I learned from that and, and is a couple things. One is if I'm any company, I think it's worth having researchers like take Aaron Ross's principles of specialization to an extreme and actually layer in a, a new team 
to go out and just be data curators. Um, no matter how good your data provider is, everybody has their own unique needs when it comes to data and making sure it's clean and up to date and getting exactly the right audience and exactly the, the ideal customer profiles. I think it's probably worth every company having a couple researchers hired just for that. Um, of course, it, you know, barring your ability to do that at, at scale, uh, then you can look to data providers to supplement it. Um, so, so that was Discover Org. And then the second piece of that play is specifically tracking and following our end users. There's about 40,000 end users of Discover Org's platform. And you know, they're changing jobs. They get new sales positions. We want to follow them into those new companies where they can champion our products uh, internally. And we find it's, it's been really successful. So if you have a user base like that, again, I would recommend uh, doing everything you can to follow those users around. And, that, and that's a good point. And I actually want to kind of follow up on that. So the research that you guys are providing to the SDRs, do you find that it actually accelerates, and you kind of talk about this, accelerates their conversion rates and accelerates their workflow, or it actually hinders them because they themselves are not doing the research um, as part of their outreach? And this no, I, I definitely think it accelerates them. There's a lot of stats out there. Um, you know, Gartner, the one, of the, the one that gets cited the most, I think, is Gartner found your average salesperson spends two thirds of their day in non-selling activities. And that's a mix of like admin work, you're entering data into Salesforce and your CRM, uh, as well as research and prospecting, right? So you're figuring out who do I need to talk to? How do I get in touch with them? Um, and so that that's a lot of non-selling wasted time. And then you have to think about, well, what happens if we can win back that productive time? We can get them on the phone. They can have more conversations. It doesn't stop them from doing research to understand the account, personalize a message. It just gives them the right people and, and the right contact data that they need at their fingertips. So it's been pretty shocking for us. I, I mentioned earlier, when Jake came on board, we used to think 15, 20 completed meetings was good. Jake raised the bar to 30, but he did that really on his own. Um, the, the rest of the team was still around the 15, 20 range. Now that we have Discover Org for Discover Org, our average reps are doing 25 uh, completed demos a month or, or uh, generating 25 sales qualified opportunities, if you think of it in those terms. Um, and then we've got reps doing 30, 35, 40 even. So the, the overall sort of body of work being produced by the SDR team is, is massively accelerated uh, because of this, this research. Awesome. I'd like to add one thing to that, Morgan. I, yeah. I think from a morale perspective as well, um, it kind of creates this buzz and energy or it's created this buzz and energy where, you know, a lot of, to Patrick's point, if a lot of their day historically was figuring out who to call and prospecting, that's a lot of labor time. That's a lot of time not on the phones. Where now, when we roll this out, and every time the reps get a new account, they get really excited of, cool, I have new people to go after. I have good contact information to call them with. And people are on the phones. There's a buzz. You know, when everyone's booking a lot of demos and the, the energy of, of our office is really high, I think it just carries over. Um, and it's just exciting, quite frankly. It's, it's uh, kind of the monotony of the research goes away a little bit, and we hire SDRs on their ability to sell or ability to persuade. And the more we feed them and the more they can do so, it bodes well for all of us. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and I, I think that is a good play, you know, using your own tool, eating your own dog food, as they say, and then helping accelerate that process. So that's a really good play right there. So let's go into the next play. The next play is newest reps is outbound only, senior field reps inbound that's a very interesting uh perspective because a lot of people will actually their new people will actually be their inbound so kind of talk about the the mindset and the methodology behind that and like how's how's that seeing results for you guys yeah well this is one of those things that, that didn't go well for us one of the missteps we made um and actually i mentioned kyle porter i remember reading his blog back in the day they came out with like they just released their whole playbook and said this is how yep. we do it and I saw that they had their junior reps on inbound and then a track to move to outbound. And my thinking back then was, I'm gonna do it the opposite way because inbound is such an important channel for us. We get over, at the time we actually got like 60% of our deals and revenue came through inbound leads from the website. My fear was if I give that to the inbound or the, the most junior reps, the conversion rates would slip. They're, they're gonna let some good deals fall through. And this, this most important channel we have will shrink a little bit or it won't perform as well as it could. It was also like a reward was the thinking. You could earn your stripes on outbound. You, you had to like sort of have a rough go on it. And then if you were successful, 
uh, as, a, as a reward, you got to start working inbound leads. So there was like three years there where that's how we set it up. Um, what we realized over time though was, was Kyle had it right along, all along and inbound is just easier, right? So when you're brand new at a company and you, you don't know it that well, it's a lot easier to talk to hand raisers and to have a positive natural conversation with them and to qualify them and schedule them for a demo uh, than it is to take someone who's cold, a VP of sales or a CEO who's never heard of us before and persuade them that we've got something compelling to look at. So, so we flipped it and now our most junior reps start in inbound. It gives them like a, a sort of low pressure way to learn Discover Org, to get comfortable talking to, about Discover Org. And then we've created, uh, also we have the benefit now of creating sort of a real path um, in, in terms of growing within the organization. So you start an inbound, you're usually there for two, three, four, five months, and then you're gonna move into outbound. Um, and, and now it's a real sort of promotion. We actually give the reps a raise. It, it, it's something to look forward to. And then we've got our best, most talented people doing the hardest job. Um, and, and at the same time, instead of seeing a, a slip on conversion rates on inbound, we've actually been able to, to seriously increase the conversion rate just by putting in better process there, um, getting the leads distributed in a more timely manner, making sure we're calling them within a minute of them uh, inbounding, that sort of thing. Cool, awesome, yeah. And, and so, <coughs> What do you, what have you seen the, uh, the inbound to outbound progression? How has that been for the reps? Do you now see that when they get to outbound, they're more comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of times on the inbound channel, we do a lot of, you know, qualification, of course, but there's also disqualification. And even though there, these are people coming to the website and raising their hand, it's not without the objections. If you ask me what the biggest challenge of cold calling is, quite frankly, yeah, you need to have a good pitch, but it's also understanding how to overcome objections. And I think that's true for any company, right? So for us, what we really strive for SDRs to do is ask good, leading, intelligent questions to get to the core of the issue. So when we can develop those skills on the inbound team and make sure they're proficient in, yes, talking about the product and who we are and what we do, but more so understanding the challenge that we solve and specifically digging into the pain that is uh, catalyzing these folks to come to the inbound, that's uh, absolutely transfers to the outbound team. They have a good sense of what some of these pre-existing pains are they're calling into, and they can speak to them really intelligently and efficiently in how we can actually solve those. Awesome. Yeah, I think the, the interesting thing you see is actually like a lot of inbound guys eager to get on outbound, and you think maybe the, you know, it's like, why do you want to give up this cushy inbound position? But it, it's a matter of pride for them. Like they get comfortable talking about Discover Ward, and then they want to go test their skills in a, in a harder environment and, you know, out there in battle instead of sort of in the practice ground. So um, they, 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 they strive to become those outbound reps and they're always pretty excited when they get it, which, which was frankly a surprise to me. Like I didn't expect that reaction. <clears throat> I think yeah. one of the things to add on this note is when I actually, when I had started, there was no specialization. It was the SDR yeah. were doing both inbound and outbound. And, you know, Topo and Serious Decisions, everyone says specialization is a good thing. And I think that we experienced that firsthand. Not only did we see an increase in the um, outbound demos booked each month per rep, but also the overall conversion rate went up too. Yeah, good, great points, great points. And so the next play is probably, I actually just like the name of this play, SWAT Team. What's, what's going on with SWAT Team? What's happening here? Yeah, so SWAT was um, this idea we came up with uh, probably about three, four months ago now. And what we realized is we have inbound reps fielding, you know, we get a thousand inbound leads a month. We've got outbound reps who are cold calling into a list of named accounts that's regularly being replenished by Discover Org for Discover Org. But in between there, we have our marketing team and, that is doing cold email nurturing. Jake mentioned it earlier, but we built Discover Org on the backs of cold emails. Now, cold email marketing isn't what it used to be. You can't do it the way you, you, you used to be able to. Um, but what we found is we can actually send out about 1,500 cold emails a week. We split them up across our SDRs, so they go out automatically from our outbound SDRs, but they, they go up behind the scenes. It's hands-off for the outbound SDRs. They don't touch those. Um, they're, they're working their named accounts. 
And so we have these 1500 leads that are just getting email nurtured by our marketing team. Um, the, the emails are coming from the SDRs, but really it's marketing. And they're just sort of sitting there. And we had this hypothesis that, okay, what if we layer on calls and, and manual touch points and social connects on top of these emails? I bet we'd see a, a big boost to the conversion rate. Made a lot of sense in theory. And then we realized, well, th this is high volume, right? There's 1,500 a week. So we need a rep or two or three reps to just go in there and they're gonna be this high velocity team and, and we'll call it SWAT. Their goal is just show up every day, put this, this list into a dialer and just hammer the list um, and then go, you know, just keep churning through it. Um, very, very high activity, not that strategic or sort of personalized because the messages are already persona based, but they're, they're going out automatically. Um, and in the, the first, and first off, it, it hasn't worked like at all yet. Uh, <laughs> no. So that, you know, that, and it, there's been a couple of reasons. We think it's still a good idea. We think we know how to fix it, but, um, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the reason, um, the reason it didn't work to start is we didn't put any, give it any attention. We just took a couple of guys and we said, Hey guys, just go do this, go make a bunch of calls. And we were focused on inbound and the outbound team and, and continuing to tweak and optimize there. And so we, but we had taken a couple inbound reps and just threw them into the deep end of the pool. Um, they, you know, you'd think we'd have learned that lesson by now, but any new program, any new strategy requires uh, a deep attention to get it off the ground. And we just didn't give it that. So there went the first month or two. Um, and then over the last month or two, we've been dealing with sort of the process issues. It's sort of, it's complex to, we have 1500 leads that we're email marketing to, but we're splitting them up amongst all these SDRs and sending it out that way. Then we need to sort of re-aggregate the data and put it into our dialer for these reps to call. And so finally we realized, man, there's all these technical issues preventing us from doing really well here. Um, the other thing we found is we know that, that we have like a, four to six percent conversion rate on cold leads. So if our outbound SDRs call 100 um, sort of random, purely cold leads, four to six percent, we can ultimately get to, to convert to a demo. We thought these leads would convert at a higher rate because they've been nurtured by uh, email marketing, but they they weren't at all. They, they still are just converting at a four percent rate. What we've recognized that we need is just a level of activity that we haven't been able to achieve yet. We need these guys making 100, 150 dials a day. And I, I think that's that's what we're gonna start doing next week. We finally got all of the sort of technical difficulties out of the way. We've, we've made it possible for the reps to start doing this. And my expectation is that we'll see an increase in the conversion rate and mostly just in the quantity of demos we're getting out of this because we're going to put a lot more activity against it. And stepping back a little bit there, Patrick mentioned 100 to 150 dials a day yeah. um, for, the SWAT, for the SWAT team. Um, the outbound team here puts in between 50 and 60 dials. And we're using this as an intermediary step between the inbound role and the outbound role. Our thought is that if these guys can get really, really good at you know, moving quickly and mastering the um, internal systems we have and, you know, delivering pitches really effectively and getting these demos booked that when they go into an outbound role where they're paired strategically with one of our account execs, they're going to have a really, really good sense and a really good, quite frankly, worth ethic, work ethic, excuse me, so they can kind of take that momentum and translate it into doing a true ABM approach um, in that next role. Again, I mean, I, I think it hasn't been without its uh, uh, to Patrick's point. I think we're we're getting up to a place now where we're getting it dialed in, and in fact, one of uh, our focuses for March is in fact the SWAT team. So we're hopeful to uh, come back in a month with some good news about how that's uh, improving. Improved. I'm ready to hear it. I'm ready to hear the SWAT the SWAT team story. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, like, I think that the interesting thing about this exercise to me is it's, it's a question around uh, personalization versus volume, right? And I think that's a debate that, that's about to be had out there in, in our world where yeah. all the content I see on LinkedIn and in these discussion boards and, and in the modern sales pro group, you know, it, it's trending towards personalization, right? Let's let's be more tailored. Let's be more thoughtful in our messaging. And I agree that that's a good thing. But then your challenge, of course, is how do you do that at scale? 
And depending on your, your average deal size, your ASP, like obviously if you have a million dollar deal, you should be purely personalized. Everything should be personalized. But if you have a $100 deal, you should probably be fully automated because it's just not worth putting the, the time and effort into personalization. And most people are somewhere in the middle on that spectrum. And so I think the jury's sort of still out on what is the right balance of like customization and personalization versus automation. And so to me, this whole SWAT experiment is, is an exercise in figuring out, okay, we've got our outbound reps that are, are more personalized and more strategic. What, what can a SWAT team do if, it's, if we try to automate it all? If we, if we try to go really high volume, emails that are fully automated, but that are, you know, that we've segmented by persona, by audience and so forth. And can, you know, is one of those strategies more effective for a company that has uh, an average deal size of, of 30, 40 grand, um, which is kind of right there in the middle. Right, exactly. So, you know, as we, as we wrap this up, you guys have provided a lot of value on your place. What is a quick bit favorite play that you have implemented and gets you excited that you share with your SDRs? Patrick, you want to take lead on that one? Uh, yeah, I don't have anything that comes to mind. Actually, you pick one. Or um, one. I mean, kind of going back to our earlier conversation, I think the advent of our own internal database. I mean, you know, right. when myself and a uh, guy Anthony started here, we didn't have this database. So we were doing quite frankly what all of our you know prospects were doing is you know doing the LinkedIn hustle as he calls them just out there figuring out who to call and calling through switchboards. And I'll tell you, I mean there was just this infusion of energy and positivity when we were finally like, oh yeah, discover or for discover or you know, we were hammering the phones, everyone's excited to be here. So I think that play in and of itself um, was just good all around and it was a long time coming quite frankly but it was a big investment and it's definitely uh yielded some fruit and we're still uh getting after it so i, I think that for me was the biggest one being on both sides of the fence either a past companies or here and then walking into a completely different world the next day where all of a sudden i had you know every prospect i wanted at my fingertips it was a uh, it was definitely uh, invigorating awesome awesome Patrick, any thoughts? Any last any last things on that? No, I think uh, Jake nailed it on the head. That's the big one, and uh, it's Discover Org for Discover Org. So you gotta like the way that that rings. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. So cool, guys. One final question I ask every single guest that comes on the show: What is the one piece of advice that you give to an SDR as they start out their new career? Don't be afraid of the phone, and be willing to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Um, it is hard to get objections and to push through those. And you have to be more willing in a business environment to say what's on your mind and say what you feel than you would in real life. In real life, we're polite, we're nice to one another all the time, we're very cognizant of, of that. But in a business world, we have a, a responsibility to our prospects to, to effectively communicate our value. And if so, if you're getting an objection that you know is bullshit, and what you really wanna say is X, but you, you sort of timidly say why, you're doing not only yourself a disservice, but you're doing your prospects a disservice. So uh, be willing to be uncomfortable. That's the most important thing because you do something uncomfortable for a month and a month later, it's no longer uncomfortable and you just expanded your, your zone. I would say to add to that is ask a ton of questions. I, I think that every new hire that we bring on uh, I'll say it, Patrick will say it, like, guys, if you're not knocking on our door almost to a point of annoyance and asking questions, something's wrong there. And it's asking questions to your teammates and your colleagues. It's asking questions to management. It's asking questions to, you know, yourself, quite frankly. Like, hey, like, what could I have done differently? Or did that call go well? Or, or whatever it is. Um, I, I think to be a good, effective SDR, quite frankly, to, to be in sales in general, the best reps that I see have this deep-seated curiosity about the world around them and about uh, you know everything. It's asking questions, speaking up when you see something, say something. Um, you know, when when I got my start here, there was a lot of things that I was like, well, why are we doing it like this? Can we do it differently? And to kind of have that gumption and to speak on it, I think is huge, and that'll help you in the long run, without a doubt. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to provide 
value on plays, value on SDR insights, like how to really implement those, how to execute on those, and even talking about stuff that is not working and how you can tweak it to make it work. So thank you guys so much for coming on the Chronicles today. As I always say, guys, keep dialing, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Morgan. Thanks, Morgan.